getting these guidebooks like the Superior Hiking Trail guidebook, it tells you the distance between campsites. And you can estimate that on a lot of maps. A lot of trails have a website. But one thing you might want to find is your distance between campsites. A lot of places you're required to use the designated campsites, such as the uh, Superior Hiking Trail, because it runs through private property in a lot of places and they get those easement rights under the stipulation that people just don't go out camping into those woods willy-nilly. And if you get to a designated site like the Superior Hiking Trail, it's like the uh, AT now. If somebody's there, you know, you don't get to have the site to yourself. You have to share them. Uh, when we did the Vermont Long Trail, there aren't a lot of water sources where we were, and the water sources were sort of at the sites, and they have these shelters. Now, we were in hammocks, so we were able to hang every night because we didn't want to stay in the shelters of people. And that's another thing to consider. If you're a hammock hanger, are there trees? Are there going to be trees at the site? It's a dice roll sometimes. Another reason to have these maps or go on a forum or if you can find anybody that's hiked that trail before or go online and search it. And a lot of time you find these people that have these blogs or they've just written a report about their trip and they might talk about the water sources. And that's an important thing. A lot of trails don't have great water sources, meaning where you can stop and fill up and get water. Now, the Superior Hiking Trail has great water sources, so I don't have to carry a lot in the day. Other trails are going to require you to carry a lot of water or maybe find somewhere that you can stash some water up ahead. So check those water sources. Are there creeks, rivers, ponds, lakes, streams, springs, whatever there may be. So check that because that can make a huge difference in the comfort of your trip. You don't want to go around just being super thirsty. That's the worst. Rather be hungry than thirsty. Now one thing to consider is places where you can do dispersed camping. And here in Minnesota, uh, that is usually not your state parks, but your state forest. And the state forest, now that you don't have your fancy campgrounds and the, the trails may be kind of rambly and not that maintained, if they have a trail at all, but you're allowed to, if as long as you're 200 feet away from water, from a road, from things like that, you're allowed to go out and do what's called dispersed camping. So check and see if it's dispersed camping or camping has to be specific in a site. All right, look at all the trailheads and see how far you are from big roads. Um, check online, join a club, go to the website, go on a forum. I'm on hammock forums a lot. You could ask a question like, uh, are, is, you know, people have asked it there. Is parking safe at the uh, such and such trailhead on the Superior Hiking Trail? And I can chime in and go, Never have my car broken into. Other places have a lot of problems with break-ins. So check your trailheads. Uh, see where they are. See how lonely they are. Are they near things? Like when you come out, you want to make sure you can go eat somewhere quickly. Something to look at. A lot of trails have a lot of trailheads. So you can shuttle your cars if you're going with a few people. Or, you know, put 30 miles between. Uh, which is like what Hickory and I did on the Vermont Long Trail. But if you're going to do a two-car shuttle, keep in mind you eat up a lot of your day because the two of you have to drive down to one end of the trail, park one person's car, they got to grab their stuff, put it in your car. If you're us, you're totally never prepared even though you think you are and you're rooting around for this or taking that out. Put everything back in the car, drive back up again to where you're going to start and then go, you know, I thought I was going to put this in here now and nah, I thought I wasn't going to take that but now I'm going to take this or I don't want those kind of Pop-Tarts, I'm going to put these kind of Pop-Tarts in. So you got to factor in that shuttle time of switching your cars, particularly if you're doing like 30 miles at a time. If you're doing a long trail, you know, one person's at this end and the other person's at this end and it's 250 miles, well, you don't have to worry about it so much, but you still got to make that drive and go back. Another thing to think about, and people on the Superior Hiking Trail do that, they have the Superior Shuttle, which doesn't really run in the winter, but during the summer, Monday through Friday, um, not all the way to the north end of the trail, but about as far as Grand Marais. That shuttle goes up and down that trail at times, and they're pretty good. They'll sit at that trailhead for two minutes. If you're not there, they're going to leave you. You can reserve a place, but look at shuttles in your area. A lot of time it's uh, local people, like down in the southeast. It's just some guy that lives up there near Damascus, and he'll drive you from here to here. Now he'll charge you. You know, you, you got to pay a little bit because that's a person's time and gas, and they're driving you a long distance to get there. So 
Try to find that information. If you need a shuttle, you're a person that maybe you're going to park your car down here and you want to get a shuttle ride way up here because you're doing a solo or it's just two of you. And then you're both going to walk back down to the car. And a lot of times the hotels or resorts or places like that might provide shuttle service. It's worth looking into. That's another thing to think about planning your trip. There's a lot of things to think about. Kept me up last night once I started thinking about all these things going, I guess I never think about them even though I do it. Another important thing to look at um, is for a bailout. Now let's say you get on the trail, you're 70 miles in, your friend turns their ankle, you get hurt, you're not feeling good. Some trails, you have no bailouts. You're going to have to turn around and walk back. You know, you're in a wilderness area. Other trails, you might be somewhere pretty close to a road or another trailhead that you can get off the trail and hike three or four miles out to a trailhead and maybe you've got phone reception and get yourself off the trail or call somebody. This is another good reason to carry, a, I carry the InReach Explorer so I can, I can send a text even if I don't have reception out there. And that said, there's another thing to look at in these modern times, everybody with their cell phones, check in the area and see is there cell reception out there and what what carrier has better reception you know is it AT&T is it Sprint is it Verizon something to consider and you can usually find that on blogs and forums or call a ranger station they sometimes know you know wherever you're going look at search the local ranger stations and call them and see if you can get some information or local outfitters now my buddy Hickory one thing he loves to do he loves to do a food and water cache and um, and it's kind of fun, you know, so let's say you don't want to carry six days of food, but there's a place on the trail, and we'll, you know, him and I, when we get together, part of our fun is driving around in the car, listening to Frank Zappa and weird music from our youth, and just pretending that we're 17 years old again, instead of being 61, like we are. We'll drive to a place, and he brings a couple of ammo boxes and some chain and a lock, and we go out somewhere, and we put some extra meals, some extra fuel, he'll put a little bit of whiskey for himself, I might put an extra extra candy bar we might stash some water and it's kind of fun because you sort of have something to look forward to because you know even three days in you can just say man I am sick of oatmeal and he was on a real health kick eating all this cashy stuff and one time he's going man I'll trade you 10 cashies for one pop-tart <laughs> was so sick of cashies some trails or some areas don't like you to do that others there's no rules on it at all but we put it in the ammo things, we cover it, and Hickory always locks it up with like a bike chain just so an animal doesn't drag it off. And it's fun to get there and kind of go, you know, I'll put this back in and I'm going to grab this meal because I don't want that one. And then, but the thing is, when we finish our trip, we got to go back and pick all that up. But that just adds to our enjoyment. He taught me that at the end of a trip, don't rush home. Take your time. Stop somewhere and cook a chicken where they got some barbecue grills. Animals. When you go to a trail, maybe it's not your area. Minnesota here, we have black bear, moose, wolf, um, sasquatch, red squirrels. So, you know, you're going to go somewhere else that maybe doesn't have black bears. And it's, you know, or you might be going somewhere that has brown bears, grizzly bears, or wombats. Or you might be attacked by a badger. Look forward to seeing that wildlife safely if you can, but also be prepared. Don't be worried. Don't hike with worry, but be vigilant. And it's good to know, do you need a, do you need a bear vault or an ursac or how do I want to hang my food? Or if we're in grizzly country, we really might want to cook somewhere other than where we sleep. Snakes are another thing. We don't have a lot of snakes here in Minnesota. Southeast where I go, a lot of snakes. So I got to kind of think about my footing or stepping over logs again going, there could be a snake right over there and won't be here in Minnesota. They'll just be that red squirrel maybe Sasquatch leaning in on me. 